got a lot of lumber here right now. They got a big old pile here too. Good morning. Because these are floor joists and we need to keep the height of the floor consistent we brought uh, an example here and that's what they'll call it here in the Philippines I say bring sample you know uh, so we brought a sample example of the previous wood they cut for us so they can measure it and make sure they get it exactly the same so it's not like a quarter inch off or something you know because they just set this blade for every cut they do and they're always moving it so, um, just a suggestion if you're having meal, you know, sawmill cut you lumber, that when you go back to them, you might want to keep a scrap and take it to them to get those dimensions the same again. We are wanting to put a nipper roof on this, and I want it nice and thick though. And then I think I'm going to try to uh, find some some treatment to spray on it. Like back in the U.S., we'll have this stuff called like Thompson Water Seal. Uh, that you can treat wood and decks and stuff with. I want to find something similar to that. And maybe put it in my little pump sprayer. And after we put that nip on, spray it all down and treat it. To try to make it last longer against weathering. Another thing we want to do is we want that nipper to look really thick. So what they do here is called a, a double nipper. So they'll double stack it before they fold it and stitch it on each piece. It's a little loud over there right now. I'll show you one. So right now, what well, if you just go here and buy? See, they got a sign that says nipper for sale. If you go here and buy, it's just one fold over. But a, a double nipper, of course, has two fold overs. And then they kind of put this little stitch through the middle to hold it down flat. And so when you put that, you're getting a whole lot thicker layer that starts piling up. Another thing is how far away when you stitch that nip onto the frame that you space each one of those. If you get it closer, you're gonna get a higher pile. And if you spread it out more, of course, you're gonna need less, less nip to do the roof. But it's gonna be a thinner roof too, though. And we want it to uh, be a really full, kind of fluffy looking roof, you know. And it also has less chance of ever leaking. But NIP is so much cooler. Even if you're gonna air con those little rooms or anything, it is just so much cooler. It can kind of breathe a little bit. It doesn't absorb the heat like metal does. Uh, if the coconut's up above, a limb falls, it kind of just bounces on it. It don't have a hard impact. There's a Ricky Racer. Woo! And uh, it doesn't have a hard impact. So uh, that's kind of nice too, you know. Imagine if you're laying in the bed, man. You're chilling at the beach side. And then 
either like a small coconut or let's just say one of the palms fall and that hard end on it boom hits that metal <laughs> maybe you're gonna be attached to the ceiling boy a heart attack so uh, that's another thing is the uh, the quietness of it you know and be able to absorb sound and be able to absorb impact so uh, what we would do is after I treat it is then they have this net kind of like a fish net real fine that you can strap down over the top of that nipper and there goes another one and that keeps the uh, it's really noisy here by the street that keeps the wind from blowing all the nipper up and flipping it off of there and destroying it and kind of wadding it all up so and it also gives a little bit more protection a little bit against the sun too but I think if I could spray that and treat it, I've never done it before, but it's what I'm thinking of doing. I think it would last a whole lot longer before we'd have to come along in a few years and, and change out and put new NIPA again. Man, I tell you, I so much love living here in the Philippines. I just, I can't even describe it. You know, like, in the U.S., life is good there. I'm not going to deny life is good there. In the state of Texas, life is really good there. Um, I'm not beating it up. I love my country. I love my state. But I love living by the water. It's what I always wanted. Um, it's not like the absolute perfect dream of what I had. I wanted to live where the mountains met the beach. And I wanted to be in a place where the temperature, you know, stayed like 60, 70, 80s. But, you know, uh, I'm sure a lot of people want that, right? So what Joel's doing is a lot of this lumber, it's not real straight. It'll have bows and humps. So he's pulling a nylon right here from one end of the frame to the other. And then he can see if there's a high place before we put the floor. Like every spot over here, it was up, what, almost three-fourths of an inch over here. And he's getting it down flat. You know, it's not like you're going to uh, Home Depot's or Lowe's in the U.S. and you're getting some perfect kill dry wood and all that. Even though this is way stronger than what you get in the U.S. So, uh, and cheaper. And it's freaking mahogany. So, uh, that's what he's doing. And then you see like that warp right there and that. We're putting these in, which like Joel and them, they'll call it bridging. We're putting these blocks in between right here. And that also gets that all pulled up straight and it shares the weight and the shifting between each one of those joists. So uh, he's doing it on this end right now where he's taking the scraps and putting it in there. And uh, then he's gonna be doing the same thing on the other end. Then it gets it all nice and straight. Putting some pretty big nails in this. As you'll see here, oh, that one fell off. Grab another one here. You can see some pretty.
pretty good size nails right here. Um, I actually brought my my nailer, my air nailer, pneumatic nailer, and I've got galvanized ring shank nails in it. But you know what? I'll just be honest, and these big old spots right here are better than that even. I mean, these are these are some pretty good size nails right here. Now listen, we're gonna get something clear right from the start, okay? I'm building this the way we wanna build it, here right now outside the beach. I know we're gonna have every person that's a framer and a construction engineer and all, that's gonna have 15 different opinions of how we're doing it. And I'm gonna tell like I always tell, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm not building a little American house, I'm not building a storage building. Um, I'm building something that's going to resemble a little bit of a native look, but not really native design, okay? So, uh, just hanging here for the ride. Y'all can talk amongst each other and be construction experts if you want. <laughs> uh, it's okay with me. Yeah, this frame is coming out very, very nice. It's going to be a really strong floor. I mean, it just, it feels solid. It does. It is going to come out nice. Yeah, put it on one side so then we'll put the glass up on top of that. So I just bought this U PVC sliding door. I have to look at my receipt how much it was. Then I bought 16 sheets of that one fourth uh, Santa Clara marine plywood. That's the one they use building a lot of boats with, also. And then I bought a UPVC window uh, for the room area. And I bought two of those awning or what they might call hatch style windows. They're on another cart here somewhere. And um, I bought a couple gallons of chocolate brown paint that we're going to put in behind some bamboo for um, accenting behind it. And I bought a gallon of the salignum for for treating this wood, huh? Yeah, leave one off to put over this, yeah. Put this on the, let's see, this is the screen? No, that's the glass. Put this on the bottom. This is down, yeah? Huh? No, I, I, I want this up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Yeah, we'll put all that. We'll get those small, two small windows and put inside also. We'll put those two small windows in the seat. Let's put that over here. Yeah, and that's what else I got was that liquid tile. Uh, penetrating sealer. I bought uh, numerous rollers, paint handles, everything you see here. It was around forty thousand pesos. We're going to use this as an underlayment. We're going to use it as an underlayment underneath the uh, the floor, like a subfloor. And then we're going to put mahogany wood down over the top of that. So here comes my other windows right here. These little girls trying to sell stuff. 
man it sure is hot out here I don't really need none of that but this yes, sweetheart here well thank you to um, situations that you don't want to have to deal with but you have to deal with and man it's just sometimes just help them out a little bit whatever it is don't don't knock it till you walked in their shoes so we are building that little room uh, locals call it a rest house, a buy kubo, and I'm keeping up with the total cost of materials and we're going to do a rundown breakdown of what it costs to build that because someone wanted to build a really simple little home here in the Philippines, man, uh, it'll give you an idea of how much, you know, you could build something like that for. So, uh, I'll keep up with the total cost of the way that I built it and what it all comes down to. I've been taking receipts, putting them up there on my desk, and uh, kind of create a little folder just for that. So what Joel's about to do right now is put that selignum right there. That's uh, Timber Guards, just another brand, but the active ingredient is the same. And uh, we're going to coat this, even though it's a marine plywood, we're going to go ahead and coat it right now on the bottom side that's going down on that frame. And then what Mott Mott's got right there is um, construction adhesive. And we're going to shoot beads of construction adhesive down onto those joists. And this particular brand sets fast. Those are too short, too small. Huh? So we might need bigger nails. Yeah, those are too little. I want bigger nails with a bigger head. Uh, well, I'll look because we need them with, we don't need a finish now. We need it with a, a big flat head Uno. so it'll hold the plywood down. Uno. Uno. One inch. Yeah. So you might need to get the e-bike and go get some then. Yeah, because it needs to have the big flat head on top of it so it'll hold down. All right, so we'll, we'll go get that. Yeah. Give me money, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> money, daddy. Only 60. <laughs> All right, so he's going to get busy doing these sheets and he's gonna go get nails and that means I gotta go get money 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 always money so we're gonna use this um, what's the name they use for this in US Luan that when you got this thin underlayment like this Luan anyway this is um, that Santa Clara you can see it right over there the tag on there upside down but you can see it Santa Clara you see there it says marine plywood. That's not near all the pump boats in the whole Philippines is built out of right there is out of that wood. And the reason we're gonna do this is because I'm gonna put down a mahogany wood floor and then they're gonna rip it down to a one inch thick for me. So I end up with like say a one by eight or a one by ten and we're gonna put across here. Well, that wood's not killed and it's not perfect and that's gonna be part of the beauty of it is it's not perfect. And I, it's gonna leave gaps around in places underneath it. We're not gonna to try to fit it like a fine home floor. We want it kind of rustic. And so by having this underlayment, you don't have no gaps and more like creatures and air and everything else can go through. So this will give it like a ceiling you know something that I, this somebody will get confused think i'm talking about a ceiling in a house but i mean it'll seal underneath it'll give it a barrier don't get that all over your shirt there i saw you lean into it there you go here don't put it across the end until you get your runners there done that way you don't lean into it there you go go to the next one go to the next one want the construction adhesive too because not only does it make it stronger bonding 
But when you walk on the floor, you don't get those creaks and cracking sounds and all of that. Because uh, it, it stops all of that. All right, now you go. Now I run across the end. All right, there you go. Yeah, you're gonna work across here. I'm gonna here. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna start nailing too. All right, we just got that shit shot down. And uh, hey, you wanna use this? Oh, I think so. I found a piece right here. Now, now stagger it to the other side. This time it's gonna go all the way over the Joel this time. Don't run your seam straight. Stagger it back and forth. Get your small blocks down there too. Yeah, on the side. Yeah, again, this don't support any of the floor. This is just to give a seal underneath. So when we put those planks across, there's not a gap between all the imperfections on them. So today is Saturday and it's the uh, end of the work, end of the week to, for working. So our crew there are waiting for their salary. And I have some bar soup here that uh, I'm going to give give them away. And of course their salary. Wow. May bundara pa bunos ba? May bunos pa. May... Ah, I'm going to go. Dahil 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 Hmm. Ini salah, 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 ini salah
Kurang ke perigos man. This is going on. Well, they start bickering a little bit. The evening goes on. Everybody's laughing. Just whispering and talking. James has got like a half a dozen brothers. And then they, one of them starts bickering with a few of them.